Alrighty, here we have question number two from the 2016 exam. It says, a student designs an experiment to study the reaction between NaHCO3 and Hc2H3O2. The reaction is represented by the equation above. First off, you need to recognize what those things are. We just did a lab the other day with NaHCO3. That is sodium bicarbonate. And Hc2H3O2, you got to recognize as acetic acid. We've used that over and over and over again. It may not be written the way we always wrote it, but that's acetic acid. And then over here we have sodium acetate, and then H2O and CO2. Remember that that is always a common indication of carbonic acid, because remember from the acid rain lab, carbonic acid doesn't stay together very well. It almost always breaks apart into the H2O CO2 situation because you can see it's almost like the sodium and the hydrogen switch places because sodium goes over with the acetate and then hydrogen goes over with HCO3 which makes H2CO3 but it breaks apart so again you gotta hopefully recognize those formulas of things that we've used throughout the year now, so what the student does is places 2.24 grams of the sodium bicarb in a flask, adds 60 mils of our acetic acid. This is kind of like when we did the hovering bubbles lab. We put the sodium bicarbonate in the container and then added the acid to make bubbles to get those bubbles to hover on the carbon dioxide we produced. So the student observes the formation of bubbles and the flask gets colder endothermic. So identify the reaction above as acid base, precipitation, or redox. Justify your answer. Well, sodium bicarb is a base, acetic acid is an acid. And as we mentioned, there was a hydrogen transfer. Even though you don't see it directly, it did make carb carbonic acid. So you can say it that way. The weak acetic acid reacts with the bicarbonate ion, a weak base, donating a hydrogen to it. But maybe you didn't recognize that. But you do look up there and say, hey, I don't see no solid precipitate. And you could check and say, you know, there's no oxidation number changes. All the oxygens are minus twos, all the hydrogens are plus ones. And you could go through and check the sodiums plus one and the carbons, I believe, are plus fours. So you could also say, hey, there's no solid precipitate forming. There's no oxidation numbers changing. So it's neither of those. It must be the acid-base reaction. So whether you recognize the acid-base reaction or know that the other two didn't occur, hopefully you could identify what type of reaction. Based on the information, identify the limiting reactant, justify with calculations. Well, I've got grams of the bicarb milliliters of my 0.875 molar acetic acid. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so I just need to figure out moles of each. And whichever there's less moles of, that's my limiting reactant. So 2.24 grams of the sodium bicarb divided by 84, and figuring out my moles from the molarity of the acid, you can see that there's less sodium bicarb moles that's the limiting reactant. The student observes that the bubbling is rapid at the beginning and then gradually slows down. Explain in the change in reaction rate in terms of collisions between reactant particles. Well, just thinking rationally, when a reaction first starts, there's lots of reactant particles to collide with enough energy and in the right orientation to make products. The more products get made, the less reactant molecules there are left, right? So there'll be less collisions, so the transition will slow down. That's all we're looking for here. As the reactant particles collide and form, excuse me, <coughs> sorry, and form products, there's less and less of them to collide. So in other terms, the concentration of the reaction particles decrease, which thus reduces the rate. But you don't have to say that. You just got to say, hey, there's less collisions because they went and made products. 
Now, in thermodynamic terms, a reaction can be driven by enthalpy, entropy, or both. All right, what's always thermodynamically favored? Exothermic and positive entropy, okay? Well, here we have endothermic because the flask is getting colder. So what's driving this chemical reaction? It's not going to be entropy. It's got, I'm sorry, it's not going to be the enthalpy because it's endothermic. It's got to be entropy only. So again, what is always thermodynamically favored? Exothermic and a positive entropy increase. So it's considering that this reaction is endothermic, it's not the enthalpy that is driving this reaction. It's the entropy. All right, and you can see in the reaction, I've got gases being formed from a solid and a liquid situation. So that's definitely a positive entropy increase. And that might be part of our justification here. So it says justify in terms of delta G. Of course, you've got your equation sheet. And you'll notice that, of course, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. When delta G is negative, that is when we're thermodynamically favored. Since the reaction's endothermic, delta H is positive. That can't make delta G negative. That's only going to happen when our T delta S is more positive than delta H. And that has to happen because our delta S must be positive, which we see in this reaction with a gas being produced. So do you have to be so wordy? Probably not, but you know, delta H is positive, so the T delta S must be more positive than that. So our entropy must be driving this reaction, our change in entropy. All right, the bicarbonate ion has three carbon to oxygen bonds. Two of them have the same length, and the third one is longer. The hydrogen atom is bonded to one of the oxygen atoms. In the box below, draw a Lewis diagram or diagrams for the bicarbonate ion that is or are consistent with the given information. Hmm, smells like resonance, doesn't it? You've got two of the carbon-oxygen bonds have the same length, and the third one's longer. And it told us the hydrogen atom is bonded to an oxygen. So you got to have hydrogen bonded to an oxygen, which then must go to the carbon. There's 24 electrons total, including the negative one charge. And this is what you should draw. Remember with our ions, they're in brackets, with the charge on the outside. You see I've got my hydrogen attached to my oxygen attached to my carbon. That stays constant. And that's why the one carbon-oxygen bond is longer than the others. And now here we see the double bond not flipping, but in the picture it appears to be flipping between the two. Now if you remember, you could have drawn perhaps just one diagram and had the resonance like this. Okay, and then you wouldn't need this second drawing. You could have just shown the resonance structure right there. That would have been acceptable. That's why it says draw the diagram or diagrams, but you need to show the resonance. These two carbon-oxygen bonds are the same. This one's longer. All right, and then the last part, student prepares a solution containing equimolar amounts of acetic acid and sodium acetate. So I've got a weak acid and its conjugate base, the salt. Smells like a buffer, and that's what we see here. The pH of the solution is 4.7, weak acid. Student adds some strong acid, nitric acid, stirs, and ta-da, the pH stays at 3.7. So write the balanced net ionic equation for the reaction between my nitric acid and the chemical species that keeps the pH. So, of course, nitric acid, we represent the strong acid with a hydronium ion. 
and what's going to react with it. Is the hydronium ion going to react with acetic acid? No. Is it going to react with the salt? Yes. Is it going to react with the sodium? No. Is it going to react with the acetate ion? Yes. Okay, so that's what the buffer does. The acid reacts with the negative ion. We make water and we make the acetic acid, which has the pH right around there anyway, so it keeps the pH in check. All right, lots of stuff going on in this question, lots of attainable points, you know, a lot of different units and chapters coming together, but hopefully you can see that we did cover all this at some point and you should be okay, but again, it's a tricky test, you'll be just fine. Hope this helps, see you soon.